We use our phones now to connect to everything in and around our homes. Haven't yet tried it with the tractor until now. Let's get started. You know, after we did our BX versus 1025R comparison, Christy conned me in and getting her a brand new range. Now, of course, she had to go with the most technologically advanced one possible. She's got a phone connection to the range. Uh, we can be anywhere now in the world, I guess, as long as we have connection and, and she can turn on and off her any of the burners, the oven. She's even got a Bluetooth pan that sets on top of it. Bluetooth enabled, yeah. And it will allow her to control the exact temperature. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, she loves this thing. It's a benefit to me though, because I get good eats. Well, Christie's range is a lot more flexible and functional from an electronic standpoint than these little tractors. The one through four series really don't have a lot of electronics. Makes them pretty simple to maintain, pretty simple to operate. But I've always been wondering, is there anything that we might gain uh, by getting access to some of the electronics. Deere has recently come out with this little device right here. It's a, a Bluetooth transmitter and a little cable. And that's really the whole thing here. It's a $99. You can get it at greenparkstore.com slash TTWT. We'll put a link directly to it in the description. Use code TTWT for free shipping. This is not that much cost. The question is whether you need it or not. And we'll, we'll kind of talk to that in a, in a minute. If you don't have any interest in technology, you probably don't need this. But if you're a little bit of a gadget geek like me, this might be something that you find interesting and fun. The installation on this is trivial. We'll show you that quickly. And then we'll show you some of the features of the app that comes with it. Let's start by taking off this hood panel right here. This is actually the most difficult part of the project. Um, it's, and it's not that hard. There's these little side tabs on each side. And then this is the awkward part. The hood kind of comes up like this. It's not really the hood, I guess, but anyway. Now that exposes all this side panel right here. There's a port here on the side called the service advisor port. It's right here. You can see it here from a distance so you can kind of tell where it is. And this device plugs right into that port. And that's all there is to it. Now it's asymmetric and that's how we're going to be able to fit it. There's a, two sides of it that are flat. The other sides are rounded. We'll be able to see that on the port. Here's the two flat sides. Now I don't find this service advisor port the easiest uh, to match up the connectors. I suppose that the John Deere technicians that do this every day probably don't find it a problem at all. But with a little bit of uh, patience and, and encouragement, it'll, it'll get done. Now, so it plugs in, it hangs just like this. The package sends a couple of zip ties. You can zip tie it in. There's also uh, some plastic mounts here that you could bolt at places. You know, I just kind of tucked mine in here. It'll sit right there. I don't think there's any problem at all. Now I think there's a little QR code on, on the device itself that might help with the Bluetooth pairing. Uh, I didn't use it. Um, I just powered the tractor on, went to the Bluetooth settings on my phone. It was right there. I connected, no issues whatsoever. Um, you can refer to the instructions if you have problems. I didn't even use them. I just plugged it in. It showed up on my phone and it worked. That's all there is to it. Let's put the cover back on. There is a little bit of a trick to putting this back on. This tab right here goes into that slot right down there on each side. It's a little hard to get it all at the same time. Again, just patience. Uh, the cowling here or whatever it's called is, is plenty flexible. You just have to get it started in that slot on both sides before you go on down. Make sure everything's tucked in there. Tucked in there, tucked in there. And then these things should go in right at the last. There we 
we go. Okay, the application we're gonna to use today is called Tractor Plus. You can search Tractor Plus uh, in your app store, find that application, both Android and iPhone. This application supports the large frame two series through the four series. The device that we just plugged in works on the large frame two series and through a lot of the tractor sizes. For instance, the 5E that we have has the service advisor port, but this Tractor Plus application does not have the built-in support for all of the 5E tractors. We'll see that as we drill into some detail. There is some information in the app um, and in the back end that, that supports the app uh, that provides a lot more detail about our tractors. So 2032R, 2038R, all of the threes, E's and R's, all of the fours, four M's, four R's. The exact list is available at greenpartsstore.com in the description. And I'm not sure if this will go backwards and support the older three series like the 3320, you know, 35, 3720s. I don't know about that. I'm pretty sure it does not support the older 2032R. So this would be the 2017 and onwards, 2032 and 2038R, all the way up through the four series. The same port is even on our Gator, but the app doesn't support it. So I start the Tractor Plus app on my machine and as you can see, I have two tractors added. I called them Johnny and Johnny 2. You can add tractors that are not connected to a smart connector. So you can use this application even without the smart connector. You just won't get some of the interactivity that you get with the smart connector. So we're gonna look at Johnny 2, and it says that I'm not connected right here. Um, it says that it had 197.2 hours on it the last time it was connected. It says my fuel level is 59.6%, and it has a bunch of other menu items that we'll talk about as we go along. We're not going to go into great detail on this app, but I just kind of want to show you an overview of how it works. So let's start the tractor. Hopefully you can still hear me. Now it says connected. It tells me the hours, and then there's a live dashboard here, and it tells me the engine RPMs, tells me the ambient temperature, it's 64 in here right now. It says that the coolant temperature is 71.6. Obviously I haven't run it very long and I won't run it very long in here this morning because we've got the doors all closed. Christy's already got her sweatshirt up over her nose and everything. It says that the engine load is 18% right now. It tells the soot levels, it tells the fuel usage, um, tells that the PTO is off tell us how many hours the PTO has run. We have run 40.5 hours with the PTO of the 197 that we've run. I actually think that's a little low, but I guess we do a lot of loader work with it. I, I, I use this machine to mow the yard a lot, so I'm a little surprised. Now, the engine RPMs, the engine load, the fuel consumption, all that is dynamic and, and live right here. So if you wanna see exactly how your tractor's performing at this moment, you can see it right here. Now, when I first start this app and connect it, the first thing that I noticed on my machine was that it popped up showing that there were some trouble codes. So it interrogated the tractor and shows the actual codes that have been. <laughs> it interrogated the tractor. That's a technical term, I guess. I thought it was normal, but. <laughs> So the application actually talks with the tractor and asks it what codes it has seen over history. And so you can see all those codes right here in the app. So mine doesn't show any uh, codes right now, but you will see a big red number over here by trouble codes if there's something in there that's active. Um, it says for Johnny 2, I have no active codes, no inactive codes, and I have eight ignored codes. Well, the ignore is an option that I actually chose. I went to each code when it first showed up as an inactive code and I said to ignore it because I didn't like seeing the big red um, warning that I had some sort of code. Now, you can go into each of these codes and it tells you what to do. Well, there's, there's a code that the, a warning lamp, service alert indicator. Here's one that was, well, it's another warning lamp. Um, here's one, well, it says that there's 13 occurrences of this 
uh, 3695.14 ECU, and you would actually give that number to your dealer, and he would tell you, here's one that says the right bulb error, right signal bulb fault. Now, if you've been watching our channel for a while, you know that our tractor was sent to the dealer to have all that PTO mess fixed. And I'm suspecting that a lot of these codes, maybe all of these codes came in um, while they were doing that repair. They, they likely started the machine up, maybe they had left a cable unplugged to the right bulbs here, you know, and so the codes actually allowed them to see, oh, it's, it's unplugged, we need to plug it back in. Likewise, these codes can help you if your tractor's not performing right, if something's going wrong, you can get these codes on your phone, relay them to your dealer, there's actually an email set up here where you could email it directly or you can call them um, and just tell them over the phone what it says. You might save a trip one way or the other. They might be able to tell you how to fix the problem or they might be able to bring exact replacement parts when they do come. I think this is one of the most valuable features of this app. It gives you insight into the tractor that you don't normally have. So I think this is really valuable. There are a few other sections of this application that I think are very helpful, mainly because it's handy. There's an operation section, and there's a setup section, and a controls overview section. Each of those sections are areas of the manual that belong with your tractor. Now you'll actually see the serial number of your tractor, so it knows exactly which manual to display. You don't have to go look anything up on the internet. You don't have to find your manual. You can, you can look it up right here. It will tell you any of those sections. It will point you to those sections, allow you to, to read that section of the manual. Um, it's just handy to use. It also talks about maintenance that's due, okay? And it's using the prescribed maintenance intervals in the manual. Not only will it tell you that, it will tell you how to do the maintenance and it will tell you what parts you need for the maintenance. So for instance, on this change engine oil screen, it says all of the associated parts you need. You can actually go directly to John Deere, their site right here, and you can order those parts right there online. Or you can jot down the numbers here and go to greenpartsstore.com and order them with free shipping um, with coupon code TTWT. Now, one thing I see here is it's got an associated video tab, how to change your engine oil and filter John Deere compact utility tractors on YouTube. I think they're trying to put me out of business. <laughs> what is this? That should be a TTWT video, shouldn't it? We'll have to work on that. That's just not right. No, they're going to have uh, videos that are associated specifically with your tractor. Um, how-to videos, just really helpful things like that. They have compatible implements here at the bottom. The only thing they show are the Frontier implements. So the implements that I have configured are showing on the main equipment page here. And uh, I have the 120R loader, the 260B backhoe, the 220R loader, uh, the sickle bar mower, which is uh, the Machio sickle bar mower that we have. It's the same as the Frontier. Now. One thing that's a little bit confusing here is they show the icon of a, looks like um, a little three-point quick hitch thing um, for every single implement, so you don't get any assistance visually there, uh, but it's not a big deal. Now, on the work tab, you can actually record your entire project. So I mowed the yard with this unit after I had it all configured. It shows the exact path I went. It shows that I went around the garden. It shows that I went around the pond. It also shows the area here in the backyard that I didn't do because Christy was mowing it with a Vinny. Um, but you have a lot of details here. We see exactly how long I mowed. It took me one hour and 46 minutes to mow that. I drove 6.6 .6 miles doing that mower at an average speed of 3.1 mile per hour, uh, 4.8 acres. It shows the coolant temperatures, the engine load. Notice the engine load here was probably roughly 30% most of the time. Engine speed, I drove at full throttle all the time. Fuel rate of consumption, it shows that. The starting fuel gauge, the ending fuel gauge, how much I used, um, the soot load. If you'll notice the soot load, which is the um, DPF filter, it actually dropped while I was mowing. 
So running the tractor at full throttle, getting it good and hot, will actually lower the soot load. It shows that it was, it says the ambient temperature was 96.3 when I started and 130.2 when I stopped. I thought that was the outside temperature. It was not 130.2. I'm not exactly sure what that is. Maybe interesting to you, maybe a little bit of a gimmick, but hey, you got it. Now there's a Mower Plus application that's for the smaller mowers without the Bluetooth connectivity that you can do the mapping, okay? The Tractor Plus application, that's for the big boys, is uh, a little bit nicer because of this Bluetooth connection. So one more thing I wanna go into is the parts diagram. You can go into whichever tractor you've added. This actually works on the one series as well as two, three, and four. So you tell it you have a 1025R, you tell it your serial number, and it will link you to the exact parts diagram. By using this, you can actually find and order any part that you want for your tractor. A lot of times it'll help you to understand if you're, if you're needing to do a little maintenance, uh, just to see kind of how they, the, the parts work together. Um, but it's really useful for uh, ordering a replacement part you can get the part number, order it either by going to your local dealer from greenpartstore.com or order it directly from this application, whatever works for you. I'm sure you're probably wondering why the 1 Series and the 2025R don't have this electronic communication to your phone available today. Well, it's quite simple. There is no electronic um, wiring system, any CAN bus as they call it, on this tractor, so there's no way they can do it. So the best part of this app is that you can configure it. You have separate buttons. You can just say, go get the mail, go mow the yard, what? take out the trash. Awesome. Yeah. You just push one button and, and Johnny will wake up and he'll run off and do whatever you need to do. And you can sit inside, eat cheeseburgers, drink Diet Pepsi. Best app ever. Now, there's no control of anything on the tractor. You can't control the throttle, you can't control the PTO, you can't tell it to move forward or backwards. It's all readouts of what's going on in the machine. That would be nice though, wouldn't it? If I could sit in the shade and have it, have it go do something for me. Is this worth $99 to you? I'd be interested to hearing what you think in the comments section below. <laughs> I think it is to me because like I said, I'm kind of a gadget geek and I think it's kind of fun. Probably my favorite parts are the trouble codes, being able to see the codes that are happening in the engine and the rest of the system. The quick availability of the parts uh, diagram, you don't have to do any lookups or make sure that you've got the right serial number. Uh, the manual, being able to have full access to the manual quickly. And you do have access to all of Deere's videos that they've done on it. I'm kind of frustrated there. I want them to be TTWT videos, but Hey, let me know if you purchase one of these things. I want to hear what other people think of it and if they find it useful. Um, I, I, I certainly don't see that, that Deere is trying to overprice it. I think it's, it's priced fairly. It's really just a question of how useful it is to you. I hope you've enjoyed it. Now, Christy, go turn your oven on so we can have something good to eat. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim.